Hey, I'm George, I'm the author of Ingredients, and today I'm gonna to give you the final, definitive, scientific answer to whether you should or should not drink coffee. So I'm gonna read you a headline from September 14th, 1990. Coffee puts heart at risk. And here's a headline from 28 days later. Coffee poses no risk to heart, study says. Two headlines that say exactly the opposite thing, published within a month of each other. And by the way, I did not dig very hard to find these stories. I chose coffee basically randomly because I was drinking a cup of coffee, and I found hundreds of headlines like those. 1985, five cups of coffee triple risk. 1987, coffee does not increase heart disease risk, study finds. 1990, even two cups of coffee boost death risk. 1990, coffee not heart risk. 1991, coffee tied to increase in heart risk. 1993, coffee no risk, says study. And it's not just coffee. A few years ago, two scientists at Stanford pulled a cookbook off the shelf and flipped through the pages, picking 50 ingredients at random, things like bread, butter, lemons, carrots, milk, etc. They then dug through the scientific literature, looking for studies that linked each ingredient to either an increased or a decreased risk of cancer. 20 of the original 50 ingredients were featured in 10 or more studies of cancer, and of those 20, only four had entirely consistent results. I think that's part of the reason that the way we talk about foods and chemicals in general is so messed up. A food or a chemical is either super or it's going to murder you in your sleep that night. And that changes every year. So the question is, why? Why does it seem so hard to answer a simple question like, is coffee good or bad for you? Now I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is the answer is obscure, it's complicated, it's multifaceted. The good news is it's fascinating. When I first started writing ingredients, I thought I was gonna be writing a book about the chemistry of why certain chemicals are better for you. And there is some of that, but there's also a good chunk of science's most essential question. How do we know something is true? 